The U.S. Supreme Court was a boys' club until 1981. That's when then-President Ronald Reagan selected Arizona State Court of Appeals Judge Sandra Day O'Connor as his first Supreme Court nominee. She was confirmed with 99 senators voting in favor, including then-second-term Delaware Senator Joe Biden. For more, let's bring in Evan Thomas. He's the author of the Sandra Day O'Connor biography. First, uh, Evan, thank you for joining us. What was it for President Reagan that made Sandra Day O'Connor stand out? She was relatable. She liked him. He, he didn't really care about her knowledge of the law. That was not the no, major so issue. Interesting. <laughs> he liked her because she was a cowgirl. Uh, they they talked ranching together, they were literally. Uh, but this, I'm being light about this. There's a serious point. He understood that the first woman had to be somebody who was going to be likable that people are going to be able to relate to and not seem foreign or strange or off-putting. She was great. You know, she was handsome and forthright and had this kind of Arizona uh, grit. Grit, I was going to uh, say. Uh, and uh, people instantly liked her. And so she was confirmed 99 to nothing. How long has it been since that it's happened? It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's really why he picked her. Okay. So in terms of her time on the court, what would you say are the legacy cases? Well, abortion, for sure. I mean, she and, and, and uh, the Casey case in 1993 bought another 30 years for abortion. The Reagan appointees were close to overturning Roe v. Wade, and they thought maybe that she would be part of that, and she wasn't. Uh, she decided to uh, join the uh, uh, pro-choice forces uh, and, uh, and, and, and prolong a woman's right to choose. It lasted until a couple of years ago. That was probably her biggest case, but she also was in the majority in Bush v. Gore that elected uh, uh, President uh, Bush. Uh, she, uh, for until this last year, affirmative action, that was her, her baby uh, in higher education uh, in, in a 2002 case. Uh, so she, she authored some pretty big opinions. They, a couple of them have been overturned. That's the way it works in the Supreme Court. Uh, but she had a big impact on the law. Do you know anything about her thoughts on the cases that have been overturned? Unhappy about it. Uh, right away when she came in, she could see which way the wind was blowing and that just as Alito, her replacement was going to be further to the right than she was. She was conservative, but kind of moderate conservative. She was a pragmatist, very much center of the road, and she didn't like the court's going, becoming more ideological. She didn't, she liked Scalia, but she didn't like Scalia's ideology. Okay, so just in the last few seconds, what would you say her lasting impact on sort of the country's view of the court and kind of the shape of the court? Well, for one thing, she was the, the first and, and uh, likable, but she was very civic-minded. I wish she'd had more impact. She, uh, you know, she had Alzheimer's in recent years, so she couldn't really see what was happening, but she wouldn't have liked it. <laughs> this lack of civility, showing off, posturing. She hated all that. She was a low-key person, cowboy girl. You know, you speak by your actions, not your words. You be true to your word. You deal decently with other people. She would not love American culture today. She had great faith in America, so she would, I think, I'm sure think it was coming back, but she wouldn't like what's going on right now. Evan Thomas, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your analysis on Sandra Day O'Connor. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you.